how can thinking about water help us think about disfluencies, blacknesses, and musics together? The English language imagines speech as water. The words fluent and disfluent come from the Latin verb fluere, to flow. And the 16th century French theorist Guillaume Boucher wrote that people who live near rivers are more likely to stutter. What do we make of the sonic similarity between the Latin words balbus, stuttering, and babulus, fool, or babbler? In the shadow of Babel, the babbling waters create my babbling body. Black thinkers from Olada, Echiano to Christina Sharp observe that blacknesses are inseparable from the Atlantic and Indian oceans. We, following Sharp, are in the wake of the slave ships, the Amistad, the White Lion, Se Penchi Duma, Postilian. Postilian left London on February 7, 1704, and arrived in Gambia on March 3rd. 100 slaves were purchased. Sometime during the ship's passage to Virginia, the ship's captain, John Tozer, supplied a, quote, drum and banisu, close quote, for the captives in the hold. This was a common practice, as many slavers believed that having musical instruments on board made the middle passage easier for the captives. One day, Captain Tozer and his crew were performing their normal duties on the main deck, while down below, the Africans played the instruments loudly. The crew listened. They used the music to muffle the sound of their breaking shackles. Several rows from the hold attacked the crew and injured seven members. For Derek Walcott, quote, water has one tense and cannot run backwards. It has a perfect memory. She writes, quote, you know, they straightened out the Mississippi River in places to make room for houses and livable acreage. Occasionally, the river floods these places. Floods is the word they use, but in fact, it is not flooding. It is remembering, remembering where it used to be. All water has a perfect memory and is forever trying to get back. where it was, close quote, is this fluency a form of perfect memory? Is the stream of my this fluent speech remembering where it used to be? Are my glottal blocks floods? What if fluency is like the straightening of the Mississippi, severing orality from a prior fullness? But, of course, speech isn't just water. I too borrow a thought from Glisson. Je bâtis à roche mon langage. I build my language with rocks. So not just disfluent, but lapidary. And not lapidary as an elegant and concise, but literally stone-like. Discontinuous.
unbreakable. When I visited Le Tournay Abbey a few years ago, I saw the place as an image of my stutter. The continuity of water in the cloister fountain, the discontinuity of stone in the architecture, and the prayers, chants, and songs through which the monks tried to marry the two. They called us river folk because we met on the bank of the Potomac at night and sang across to the slaves in Virginia. I cut my tongue on the cut garnet. River folk not just because we waded in the water, not just because when Tubman sang, Moses go down in Egypt till old Pharaoh let me go. Hadn't been for Adam's fall, shouldn't have to die at all. That meant whites were nearby and we needed to stay hidden behind the trees. Not just because Moses' name means to pull out of the water. When Moses, Moses, and Moses, and when Moses, Moses, when Moses went, Moses, and Moses went up, Moses, Moses. Not just because each one of us was Moses. Not just because she was the Moses. Not just because Moses had a speech impediment, but because of what historian John Spencer Bassett wrote about us. Quote, about the beginning of this century, when the large Collins plantation on Lake Phelps, Washington County, was being cleared, a number of Negroes just from Africa were put on the work. One of the features of the improvement was the digging of a canal. Many of the Africans succumbed under this work. When they were disabled, they would be left by the bank of the canal, and the next morning the returning gang would find them dead. They were kept at night in cabins on the shore of the lake. At night, they would begin to sing their native songs, and in a short while would become so wrought up that, utterly oblivious to the danger involved, they would grasp their bundles of personal effects, swing them on their shoulders, and setting their faces towards Africa, would march down into the water, singing as they marched, till recalled to their senses only by the drowning of some of the party. The owners lost a number of them in this way and finally had to stop the evening singing. The contradiction of stuttering is that I am both speaking and not speaking. Mid-sentence, I block on a word. Sound stops coming from my mouth, but I haven't reached the end of my thought. The current of my speech has just gone underground. Or I block on the first word of a new sentence. It sounds like I haven't begun speaking yet, when in fact I have. The current just hasn't surfaced. 
I saw an image of this when an otolaryngologist performed a fiber optic laryngoscopy on me, and I watched my vocal cords at rest, speaking, and blocking. When I blocked, I saw my vocal cords tremble. I saw the words journey, it's not having arrived. The bow is bent, but the arrow still hasn't flown.